I just hope that he's okay, because that's got to be a horrible thing to go through. A Spokane Valley shooting this morning ended on one woman's front lawn. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here for Crime 2 News First at 4. I'm Whitney Ward. Neighbors in Spokane Valley waking up to gunshots this morning and a man screaming for help. It happened near 5th and Havana. Crime 2's Kyle Simchuk has been at that scene all day. He talked to the woman who found that injured man. Kyle? When well, Whitney, that victim was rushed to the hospital. We don't know his condition at this time, and deputies say they don't have any suspects, adding that the victim wouldn't tell them much as he was being treated on scene. The first call to 911 came in just around 7:10 this morning. A witness saw a man with a gun chasing after two other men near Fourth and Carnahan. As they arrived, deputies found a man with a gunshot wound near the Dearborn Apartments that's near 5th and Havana. That victim was yelling out for help and rolling around on Stephanie Rubin's lawn. The commotion woke her up. I was asleep and I heard knocking and I thought it was the kids or something and then it got louder and then I heard um, yelling from a man that was like not normal. He was saying ow. It was like horrible. And in that last clip there, you can hear the victim screaming for help. Paramedics took him to the hospital. A short time later, uh, deputies had this entire street blocked off until about 2 this afternoon. Again, we do not know that man's condition. Deputies say this does not appear to be a random shooting, but they're asking anyone with information about this case to give Crime Check a call. That number is 456 2233. Live in Spokane Valley, Kyle Simchuk, Crime 2 News. All right, Kyle, thank you very much. And Kootenai County Jail has now been declared out of compliance with the state standards after failing an inspection because of overcrowding. When fully staffed, the jail's functional capacity is about 380 inmates. That's about 80% of its total capacity. The jail has 450 beds, and now they say they've been at 90 to 95% capacity for about a year and a half. The jail did meet all other state standards, but the continued overcrowding could mean increased insurance costs. So to address the overcrowding, the sheriff there, Bob Norris, wants to create two additional pods at the jail that could house another 108 additional inmates. A man has pled guilty to sexual assaults that happened 19 years ago in Pullman. Police say he confessed as part of a plea deal. Kenneth Downing now faces 213 to 283 months to life in prison. In 2003, a woman told police that she was raped at gunpoint in her Pullman home. Then in 2004, two more women reported they came home to find a man with a gun. He raped one of them and tied up the other. And then in March of 2022, nearly 18 years later, detectives matched his DNA to the scene and arrested Downing. Trial will start Monday for the man accused of shooting two people at random at a Post Falls gas station before then going on an additional crime spree. That shooting, if you remember, happened back in December. 32-year-old Tyson Sterkel is charged with 13 felonies, including two counts of aggravated battery. He's pleaded not guilty to all charges. Security footage, though, appears to show Sterkel firing at least five shots hitting one man in the leg and another in the neck. Police said he went on then to steal another car at gunpoint. Also this coming Monday, trial for the man accused of murdering his ex-wife. Yazir Daraji was arrested back in January of 2020 after the body of Isabel Daraji was found inside a burning car on Spokane South Hill. Neighborhood in a Spokane South Hill neighborhood. Now he has a history of violence apparently with the victim. According to court documents, he had allegedly threatened to kill her before she was killed. During the autopsy, the medical examiner found the victim's cause of death was strangulation. That was before the car fire. Daraji is now facing charges of first degree murder. He's been in jail on a million dollar bond since 2020. All right, let's take a break from the headlines. Let's switch gears. It is a beautiful Friday summer afternoon, and we're eager to get started here for our weekend. Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Legoo is tracking what looks to be a very nice summer weekend. I mean, does it get much better than I don't this? Think so. hey, I, yeah, I don't think so either. It's going to be perfect. We're talking plenty of sunshine, temperatures not too warm, and not too cold either. Right now, we sit pretty at, you ready for it? 79 degrees. Basically, about as warm as we get. We should eke out another degree or maybe two today, but that is kind of a sign of what is to come. Temperature is pretty close to 80 degrees and 
Nothing but sunshine the next couple of days. Out to our east, though, that's where you're going to find all the activity. This is a severe thunderstorm watch that lasts until 10 p.m. So if you're heading up and over Lookout Pass and moving into Montana, be ready for storms. But these storms, let's talk about them. Notice that they're going to kind of pop up as just kind of singular cells. We don't have a ton of moisture and we don't have a type of storm energy that's going to bring a widespread swath. So it's just kind of these pop-up storms that quickly move their way off to the north and the east. We stay dry and clear as you move through this evening and even the next couple of days. Tomorrow, another round for Montana while well, we continue to remain sunny and dry. So the moisture is out there, we just don't see it. Temperatures in the 80s, both Saturday and Sunday with nothing but sunshine. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much. In our Boomtown coverage tonight, we're tracking the impact of growth here in the Inland Northwest, and a growing student population is a factor in changing school times and start times in Cheney. Crem 2's Nathan Hyun spoke with parents about the impact of this school year's schedule change. Well, the Cheney School District is changing their start times for some of their schools. This is because of increasing enrollment and limited number of bus drivers. The school district predicts that by staggering times, this will help with attendance and with extracurriculars. Some Cheney students will have different schedules next school year. Four elementary schools will start an hour later, and all three other secondary schools will start an hour earlier. We spoke with parents looking forward to the time change. I have no issue with it. My oldest, who goes to Westwood Middle School, he walks to school. Um, he does watch his little brother sometimes, so it makes it easier having my oldest be home when my youngest gets off the bus. For other parents, the time change is not ideal. One mom is concerned about how to drop off all five of her kids. I don't think that these uh, schedules are very accommodating. I think that the original pre-COVID is where we need to get back, where there was 10 to 15 minutes in between schools that allowed parents time to get the kids to and from school. The school district says increasing enrollment and a bus driver shortage were the main reasons for a schedule change. According to district data, in October of 2014, Cheney School District had around 4,500 students. This past school year, the district had almost 1,000 more. As soon as Brian found out about the change, he had to start looking for childcare. That's the first thing that I thought, like, what am I, where am I going to send my kids while I'm at, at work, you know, like, I, I immediately started looking for a babysitter or, like, a daycare to put my kids in. In an email to parents, the district said that an earlier start and end time would reduce high school students missing class by 50 percent. The recommendation for the start time change was approved in May, and the schedules were finalized in June. So 10 schools in total will have their start times changed, and Cheney is just one of several Washington school districts dealing with the bus driver shortage. In Cheney, Nathan Hyun, Krem 2 News. Still to come tonight, President Biden signed an executive order today announcing support for abortion education. What that means in the face of Roe v. Wade being overturned and if we could expect to see any changes. Plus, as COVID cases continue to rise, Washington Governor Jay Inslee announced he has no intention of reinstating any regulations yet. That story and more still to come.